Welcome back to another episode of Hunter Logan Unmiked. I'm Hunter Logan. This is episode three of season three. Jennings, Louisiana, where we're located, has something called Downtown Alive, where the business is located on Main Street, can go outside on Main Street in front of their location and sell their wares. There's usually food somewhere down there, in the, usually in the parking lot across from where we're at. And there's some uh, fun jump stuff for the kids. And then in the park that's catacornered from us, Founders Park, there's music. So it's kind of like a little festival, downtown alive. So this year we decided to set up a booth. What we were going to do is give away a guitar. But the way we were going to give away a guitar is you come by the booth and you download the app. Or if you had the app downloaded. So if you already had the app downloaded, you could enter your name for a drawing for the guitar. And what we were going to do is Monday on the morning show, we were going to pick the winner. We'll draw the winner and we'll announce it. And then you could come by and pick up the guitar. And we had all the CDs that the artists had given us to give away. We had those out there. So you would get a free CD. So it was cool. I mean, we were giving stuff away, and you had a chance to win a nice guitar. So this is how we did it. We had the guitar out on the stand, displayed. There's pictures of this on our Facebook, too. So we set up our table with our nice HLE tablecloth, displayed the guitar, set the CDs out, and every time somebody came, they showed us the app, we gave them a CD and had them fill out their name. Or if they didn't have it, we asked them to put the app on their phone or we helped them put it on the phone. When they put it on their phone, we gave them a CD and filled out their name. And it went really well. So I want to start doing that every downtown alive that we have. Unfortunately, the last two downtown alives we had, we were out of town. So we couldn't do it. And then, of course, COVID knocked this one out. So we'll have to hopefully catch the next one that we can do it. But it went really well because a lot of the local people that didn't know about HLE Radio found out about HLE Radio. And we were able to tell them about that. So even though at this time, we had been on Main Street in Jennings, Louisiana, where we still are. And we've been here now a total for 10 years. But at this time, we'd been there for seven years. People still really didn't know much about us and what we do. And I guess this is a close-knit town, probably. And because there's really no advertising for us to do, there's no... We don't require foot traffic because we don't have stuff to sell in the lobby. Like, we're not a retail place. So I guess, you know, all people know is the sign and the music and the vehicles. I said, oh, you're that radio station on Main Street. And that was about the extent of it. <laughs> so... But it was good to get out in the community like that and reach out and have a lot of the local people find out more about us. Now, a little bit later on, we would have even more local people find out about us big time. And I'll tell you how that happened. That's in a later podcast, but I'll tell you about it. But Downtown Alive was a success, and we just hadn't been able to do it since. But we plan on doing it again, at least when we're in town, or if we have more people here to help do it, if we're not out of town. Now, speaking of out of town, remember a couple of episodes back, by faith I'd called a new vehicle out for the station, but I didn't have enough faith for a new vehicle, but we got a better vehicle than we had because... The other vehicle was just shot, broke. But God did a miracle and gave us that 2002 Odyssey. 
which is still going today. But the transmission was starting to jerk in places. And I was concerned about it leaving us on the road because we were having to do a lot more traveling. And in 2017 and 2018, we did a lot of traveling. So after driving my wife's Santa Fe, it was the perfect vehicle for the station. I borrowed it for a trip to Nashville, actually. And it was very comfortable. The the 10-hour ride, I was comfortable there and back. For a round person like myself, it was very comfortable. All the equipment I had to carry fit in there because I had two big bins. I had equipment. I had cases. I had tables. Everything I had for a remote setup fit in there, plus my luggage. And I had room to sit another person because I always had a person with me. So I'm looking at an, another Santa Fe like my wife's, but I'm thinking, hmm, you know, man, I got to be a good steward here because, you know, the station, that's another note, but we got to have something good to travel in. We got to have something that's dependable, something with a warranty. If something happens, we don't have the money to fix it. So we need something that's completely covered under warranty. So again, I get on the radio and in faith, I say, okay, you know what? I'm going to call out another vehicle. And and I did. I said, but this time I have a faith. I have faith for a new one. I said, we can get a new one. I said, I believe, you know, we can, we can have this for the station. Because we need it. Because we're going to be doing God's work. And if it's his will, it's his bill. You've heard people say that before. And I believe that. So I went ahead and I said that. Praying and believing. And the door that afternoon opens up. And it's a gentleman I never met before. He's like, hello. I'm like, hello. I come out the back. He said, my name's Doug Thompson. I'm like, okay. He said, man, I've been listening to you for three years. I said, really? I said, cool. He said, I was praying that you weren't here. But he said, you are. I said, yeah. And then he was telling me about one morning when I was doing a, the Holy Spirit had moved on me and I was saying about cops and robbers. I was making a reference to about Satan, what he does with us. He said, man, I was on the side of the road. I was just bawling, he said. He said, so many times you've touched me and, you know, God's moved on you. And we got to talking. He's a bass player, family man, military veteran. We had a lot of things in common. Um, He's a faith guy. He's a Christian man. And then he quoted the scripture to me. He recorded this scripture to me, actually. The scripture was Joel 2.28, where it says, And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions. Well, he says, you know, I'm I'm not a young man. Well, he's about my age. Well, he's a little younger than me, actually, but not much. He said, man, after you said that yesterday about the vehicle, he said, God gives me dreams. And they pretty much come to pass. And last night I dreamed that your vehicle was delivered to you here at the station. I said, oh, okay. So then I'm like, it's time to start checking this guy. Because I'm a big faith guy. And I told you, I've been around people that prophesy. I've been around people that prophesy. And I'm good in the prophetic, spiritual realm. I, I thrive in that. So I got no problem with somebody coming with the word. But I got to test the spirit. But his spirit jived with mine. Uh, 
I didn't have a problem receiving. After spending an hour or two with him, I didn't have a problem receiving that word from him. He said, man, I was so scared to come. He said, but I looked down and I said I was out of gas, so I had to stop. He was obedient. He was obedient. Now, three years this guy's listening to me. Three years this guy's listening to me. On the radio, I never heard from him. Three years. And he just pops in my door after three years of listening to me and tells me this. Now, anybody else, I mean, that would they would look at him like he's crazy. But he tells me after me talking about the vehicle, he says, I, I seen your vehicle. He said, I don't know what vehicle it is, but he said, I seen it being delivered to you. And I seen the guy putting the keys in your hand right in front of the station here. I said, OK, brother. Cool. And uh, he left. He left after that and gave me that word. Well, we had to make a trip to... Nashville, I believe it was, me and my wife. And I don't remember what it was for this time. We went for something, and I can't remember what it was. I think it, maybe it was for a meeting, or I don't remember exactly what it was for that I went this time. So we were traveling so much. And I was looking. I was in the hotel room, I remember. And I was looking at this. Before we left town, I went and looked at a Santa Fe. But it was a 2012 yeah, it was a 2012, but it was loaded. But I didn't want a 2012. I wanted a new one. And we had talked about the different colors to get. She said, well, if you get a blue one and you put the lettering on the windshield, the lettering fades and it's not going to look good. You need a, you know, different color. And the only color we could come up with was that Canyon Copper color she had. And she's like, I don't know about getting matching vehicles. You know, I'm like, I don't have a problem with it. While I'm in the hotel room, I'm looking at this Canyon Copper Santa Fe. Man, it's a 2016, not 2017, because we're in 2017, but it's a 2016. But it's only got 20,000 miles on it, so it's basically good shape. It's still got the 100,000-mile warranty left to it, uh, bumper to bumper, so it, it's... Uh, It'll do. I'm looking at it. It's Opelousas. And, well, I'd looked at it before I left, at, actually. It pulled it up. But when I looked at it in the hotel room in Nashville, it had went down $500. I'm like, huh. And then, when we got back to Louisiana, I called my buddy that sold my wife's car to us, my wife's Santa Fe, and he had moved from Lake Charles to Jennings to sell. He was selling here in Jennings. He said, man, I got a 2017 I'll bring by for you tomorrow. It's gray, but, you know, it's in your price range because I had a certain price range that I was going to stay in, and it had to be in that price range. I said, okay, that's fine. So that afternoon, I see that one in Opelousas again that I've been looking at. It's a 2016, but I'm looking at it, and it's another $1,000 off of it. I'm like, hmm. So I call about it. And the lady's like, yeah. I'm like, I want to come see it. I'm like, okay. So we get in, we drive to Opelousas. It's raining. But it's supposed to let up. It's raining, sprinkling. It rains hard at places. Finally get there. The lady's not there. I said, well, I talked to the lady. And they can't locate it. They don't know nothing about it. This guy comes and finds it, brings it out. And I'm looking at it. And it's dirty. It's not clean. And I'm like, hmm. Uh, I don't know. I said, well, you know, I said, I don't like looking at a dirty vehicle, first of all. I said, it doesn't have floor mats, and it's only got one key fob. Now, I knew the thing about the key fob, they're 500 bucks. I found out the hard way. So I wasn't about to pay for another key fob. It was going to have to come with two key fobs. So he said, let me get this straight. The only reason you ain't buying this vehicle is because it's dirty, 
and it doesn't have floor mats and a key fob? He said, I'll make sure it's clean. I'll get you the floor mats and the key fob. He said, well, let, let, let's just go see. Let's go talk. Let, let's just go see what we can do. I'm like, well, we're here. Might as well. So we go into his office and I already have a pre-approved paper. So I'm not worried about that. And he comes back with a figure. And I'm like, mm, okay. I'm like, well, I said, I tell you what, the figure was fine. Really wasn't that wrong with the figure. And it included the 100,000 mile warranty and all that stuff. I said, I tell you what, I said, my buddy is bringing by a 2017 tomorrow for me to look at. I said, I'm not crazy about the color already, but I'm going to look at it because I told him I would. And I said, and you know, I'll let you know if, if I don't like it, I'll come back and I'll look at it. He said, hold on. He said, I tell you what. He said, you don't even have to do that. He said, we'll do the paperwork now. I'll get the key fob, the mats. I'll have it clean. And he said, I'll deliver it to you tomorrow. He said, I'll have it to you tomorrow. And me and my wife just looked at each other. <laughs> he said, I'll deliver it to you. I said, okay. So we sat down and I knew that was it. Signed the papers for it. Because exactly what that man came and told me. Exactly what happened. So Friday afternoon, I walk out my office. And as I'm walking out the door, I mean, I wasn't walking out to leave. I'm just walking out. Here comes the Santa Fe. The guy gets out and drops the keys in my hand. And it hit me exactly like Doug said. He said, I seen the guy driving the vehicle and dropping the keys in your hand. That's how I knew it was a God thing. I have seen so many things like this happen with this radio station. And that's why I say it's ministry first, it's ministry first. We didn't get in here to start a, a Christian country radio station for it to be the biggest, the best, and all that stuff. The, the goal is souls. Always has been, always will be. And when it's not souls, God will remove me and this and do somebody else or get somebody who will. Got to be about his business. Of course, this is built my faith up even more now. It allows me to have even more faith because that was a big step of faith. I'm like, surely, there must be something wrong. How can my wife have a good vehicle and the station can have one too? Keep in mind, when we started this station, both of our vehicles were getting repossessed and it took us an extra year to pay them off. And they were both broke. They both didn't run. And I'm feeling guilty about having transportation. I'm actually feeling guilty about having transportation. That's how Satan works. You gotta have transportation to do your job. It's not like we were driving big Escalades. Although I'd like to have one. I ain't gonna lie. Hunter would like to have an Escalade. Always did. Maybe one day. But I can do God's work in a Santa Fe because it's functional. Amen. <laughs> hey, I got to be about my father's business. Yes, I do. But that new station vehicle, man. Now, my wife, she's working. She's not working for the radio station yet. And it wouldn't be, well, it'd be another year or so before she would come. Before I could get her, talk her into lettering her vehicle the same. So we had two vehicles, same year, same color. And then they were lettered the same. You talk about look professional. Yeah, it did, man. It really did. God is good. God is really good. It's been good to me. I got to leave it right there, though. Hey, thanks for tuning in. I love and appreciate you, all of you who listen. I really do. I'm still on the morning show. Tune in. Tell some folks about this podcast. Hope you're enjoying it. If you got any questions or comments, reach out to me. Hunter at HLERadio.com. I'm easy to get to. I'm all over social media as well. Hey, remember, do 28 and 2. 
the dude is for Deuteronomy, by the way, in case you were wondering. I'll see you next time. <laughs>